The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, a name that for years has meant fine cheese, is the maker of the new Kraft Deluxe Slices of wonderful pasteurized processed cheese. These slices are perfect. No dried edges, no broken pieces, because they are wrapped right in the spick and span Kraft plant. You'll find Kraft is delicious processed cheese in slices in neat half-pound packages in your grocer's dairy case. Eight big slices in every package. Tomorrow, take home some of these convenient packages and get acquainted with Kraft Deluxe Slices, the most delicious processed cheese you've ever tasted. Last night, as the quiet hours rolled by, the great Gildersleeve and his little family slept peacefully in their beds. Well, all except his little nephew, Leroy. He lay wide awake. And the wheels of his mind were turning around and around. In a little while, they began to turn faster. And faster. And then he got an idea. Now it's morning. Bertie, the housekeeper, is in the kitchen cooking breakfast. And here comes Leroy. Hi, Bertie. Good morning. Leroy, you up already? Yep, I was the first down. What happened? You better fall down? No, I got a busy day. I'm flying. Well, you better tuck your shirt tail in. You're not only flying, you flapping. <laughs> what you got there, Leroy? Is that your piggy bank? Yeah, I got a neat idea. I'm going to make a pile of money for Christmas. Don't you go busting open that pig. No, I got a better idea than that. I'm going to sell guesses. Guesses? Sure. You know how stores have people guess how many beans in a jar? Well, I'm going to have them guess how much there is in my piggy bank. Ten cents a guess. Keen, huh? How are you going to do that? Well, simple. Everybody guesses how much is in it. The one that's the closest gets the pig. Oh, for pity's sake. <laughs> I get a hundred guys to guess. Ten cents a guy, that's ten bucks. I get a thousand guys to guess, that's... Ooh, that's a hundred bucks. I never heard of a scheme like that. Yeah. And there's only two dollars and thirty cents in the pig. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? Me. Leroy, you are slicker. That's what you are. You're a slicker. Yeah. Leroy, come to breakfast. Okay, I'm coming. Guess what's in the bank for ten cents? What a slicker. Hi, Aunt. Hi, Marge. Good morning, my boy. Good morning, Leroy. Where's Bronco? Yes, where is that husband of yours, Marjorie? He left early. He's working on a big deal. Yeah? So am I. Bronco won't have to work after a while. Neither will you, Aunt. You what's this? When Marge's baby gets here, I'll buy all the stuff for it. You will? Sure. I found out how to make money. It's easy. I get guys to guess how much is in my piggy bank. Ten cents a guess. I make a hundred dollars on one pig. And if I had ten pigs, I'd make... Leroy, just a minute. You want to guess? No. (laughs) Of all the dizzy ideas. What's dizzy about it? Leroy, you can't do that. It's not legal. It isn't? They put you in jail. They would? Certainly. Poor little Leroy. You thought you had everything figured out, didn't you? Yeah. I was going to get some money for Christmas. Well, there are other ways. Plenty of them. Yeah, I admire your ambition, Leroy. But let's try to think of something a little more practical. You could deliver packages at Mr. Peavy's drugstore. I don't want to run around with aspirin. (laughs) I want to have a business. That's the right idea, my boy. Hey, how about a skating rink in the backyard? All I'd have to do is squirt the hose on it and let it freeze. Leroy, nobody wants to go to a skating rink in the winter. All you have to do is go down to the river. Yeah, I didn't think of that. You're smart, Unc. Well, I've had experience. You get a business where you're selling something people need, like bread and cheese. Cheese? Something is necessary. Look at me. Yeah, I'm in water. Everybody has to have that. I see what you mean, Unc. You bet. Start a little business and do it all yourself. Get something everybody needs. For instance, right now, I need a haircut. Okay, I'll be a barber. Where's the scissors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a minute. That takes training. I was only illustrating a point, Leroy. But you've got the right idea. And you keep at it, my boy. 
You'll think of something. Sure. You're keen, Unc. Well, thank you. Gildersleeve, you have a wise old head on your shoulders. You should have been a teacher. Hi, Commish. Hello, Floyd. How about a quick haircut? Slip right into the chair, Commish. Floyd E. Munson puts out the quickest haircuts in town. My electric clippers got overdrive. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> boy. Yeah, I intended to come in this morning, Floyd, but I was pretty busy at the office. Had to wait until noon. Pumping a lot of water these days, huh? You bet. You know, uh, little Leroy dropped in to see me this morning. You he did? Yep. What a salesman that kid is. Talked the shirt right off my back. What's this? He's in business, picking up laundry. He is? Sure. Some new outfit in town called the Million Dollar Laundry. I gave him all my shirts. That kid's a go-getter, Commission. Sure. Yeah. Laundry business is all right. He took my advice. He has something that everybody needs. You get him the job? Certainly not. He got it by himself. Oh. I simply advised him. Uh, million Dollar Laundry. He sounds like a big concern. Yeah, hey, George Floyd. That shows you what a boy can do when his uncle gets behind him. The way that kid's going, you're going to be way behind him. <laughs> Leroy the Laundry King. <laughs> ah, but you got nothing to worry about, Kamish. When the kid's a big laundry tycoon, he'll buy his water from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right with me, Floyd. After all, I started him out. He's a clever little lad. But it was his old uncle that taught him the principles of business. Yes, sir. How about a shampoo, Kamish? A shampoo? Yeah, why not? If your nephew's going to be the head of a laundry, why not launder the head behind the laundry head? Yeah, sure. Shoot the works, boy. Okay. Yeah, imagine that. Leroy must have gone right out this morning and landed that job. It shows he has ability. It shows, too, that he has good advice behind it. The boy follows in the footsteps of the man. And I make some pretty good footsteps. I think I'll drop in and tell Peavy about it. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for the water commissioner today? Well, I haven't had lunch yet, Peavy. You are watching the sandwiches today. It's the same old bologna. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I'll take a bologna sandwich. You going to eat it? Certainly, Peavy. Why shouldn't I? Well, no reason, I guess, if you like the stuff. <laughs> I can't figure out why people come in here to eat. This is a drugstore. Well, people get hungry. Well, why don't they go to a restaurant? I don't know why I sell sandwiches. Restaurants don't sell aspirin. You, Peavy. There you are, Mr. Gilbertson. You. Mmm. Why, right. this is a delicious sandwich. Best I ever tasted why do you say all those terrible things about your food? <laughs> Psychology, Mr. Gildersleeve. If I say the food's good, the customer says it's bad. But if I say it's bad, the customer says it's good. <laughs> Tricks of the trade. Uh, Peavy, you're shrewd. By the way, have you heard about Leroy? Yes, Leroy was in this morning. Said he's in the laundry business. Yep, my idea. You don't say. Sure. The boy wanted to make some money for Christmas, so I coached him on how to get started. I'm beginning right now to give the boy the benefit of my experience, Pete. Hmm, I see. Well, I hope the laundry does good work. I sent all my shirts. You did? Yeah. What a nice thing to do. And you don't have to worry. Leroy's doing just as I told him. Right, George. He's going to be exactly like his uncle. Yes, he's taking after you, all right. You bet. Working with the laundry, he has the water and the same soft soap. Hmm. <laughs> really? You know I never soft soap anybody. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, that Peavy. What a kidder. Soft soap. He's a wonderful old fellow. He just says those things because he likes me. Oh, Leroy. Well. Hi, Unc. You're pulling your little wagon. 
And loaded with bundles. Yeah, I did like you told me. I, I got a business. I'm in laundry. You so I hear. A million dollar laundry. It's key, Knock. I got all kinds of customers already. Floyd Munson, Mr. Peavy, Judge Hooker. The judge? Well, good. Yeah, and even Mayor Terwilliger. The mayor? Leroy, you're doing fine. Sure. I'm getting all the important people in town. How about you, Uncle? Can I have your laundry business? You certainly can, my boy. After all, we're practically partners. Where's your bundle? You'll find my shirts upstairs in the clothes hamper. Okay. How about the one you got on? <laughs> the one I've got on? You got a spot on that cuff. Well, I'll keep my coat on. I have to go back to the office. Okay, I'll get it tonight. See you later, Uncle. You what a salesman. Floyd was right. You talk the shirt right off your back. <laughs> I'm glad this stays over. It was hot in the office. Keeping my coat on all afternoon to cover that spot on my shirt. I wonder how little Leroy's getting along with his new job. Yeah, how can he miss? Is that you, Uncle Morris? Yes, I'm home, Marjorie. Where's Leroy? Oh, he's here. You well, good. Have you heard about the laundry? Have I heard? Marjorie, I practically suggested it. Remember this morning when Leroy asked me for advice? You suggested it? You, well, it was the same thing. Leroy's just a boy. He needs an older head to help him along. How's he doing? Ask Bertie. Eh? Just go out in the kitchen and ask Bertie. Yeah, I don't like the sound of this. What's going on around here? Hello, Bertie. Well, you home at last, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'm glad you home. Oh, what's up, Bertie? It ain't what's up, Mr. Gillsleeve. It's what's down in the basement. Well, what's in the basement? Leroy. You know what that boy's doing, Mr. Gillsleeve? Well, yes, Bertie, but... You know what he's doing in that basement, Mr. Gillsleeve? No, Bertie, but... Look at that sign he stuck up on the basement door. Let me see. Million Dollar Laundry Leroy Forrester President. Gopher. That's what he's doing in the basement in my washing machine. In the washing machine? He's doing washing. He's doing everybody's washing in my washing machine. You will, Bertie. Now, wait. Let's look and see. I ain't looking. I'm just sitting and fuming. I ain't looking. <laughs> the boy was only trying... You got the soap down there, and that machine's are going. The suds are going to be coming out the windows, and I'm just sitting and fuming. <laughs> now, Bertie, let's look at this comedy. Leroy's just a boy. You'll have to admit it's a pretty clever idea. The suds going to be coming out the windows. Now, wait. More than one big business was started just this way. Sit. Maybe he didn't go about it just right. But at least he's trying. Human. <laughs> Let's try to be understanding. I understand. He's down there with the soap in the machine going oh, and I'm just sitting there. What's the use? I'll be to see what's going on. Hi, Up. How do you like my laundry? Leroy. I didn't know you were going to do this in the basement. I can't take the washing machine upstairs. Boy, I'm really turning out the stuff. Uh. Aren't you not sore? Me? You certainly not. You Bertie and Marjorie are a little upset. But they'll be all right. You have the right idea. You took the bull by the horns and started your own business. That's what counts. Of course, you'll have to find some other way to do it. But I'm not angry with you for this. No, sir. Ah, oh, Keenock. I told all the fellows what a smart boy you were. Just like your uncle. And this proves it. Gee, thanks. Look at all the shirts I got. Yours and everybody's. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, whose shirt is this? Gee, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? How are you going to tell who they belong to? Who they belong to? How are you going to get the right shirts back to the right people? Back to the right people? You mean you didn't mark them? Uh-uh. Leroy! <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Friends, when you get Kraft Deluxe Slices, that marvelous pasteurized processed cheese in slices, you're in for many delightful surprises. First of all, when you open up one of these neat packages, you'll be amazed to find eight big slices, each one as large as a slice of bread. And you'll notice, too, that there are no broken pieces or dried-out edges. 
But now comes the most wonderful surprise of all, your first taste of this fine cheese. Notice that flavor, that wonderful cheese flavor that's so unusually good. And the reason why Kraft Deluxe Slices taste so good and are so perfectly formed is that they're made differently. For instead of being cut from a loaf like other sliced cheese, Kraft Slices are formed by a new Kraft invention that captures all the fine processed cheese flavor into each perfectly formed slice. Then, wrapped and sealed in a spick-and-span craft plant, protected all the way to you. And, of course, one of the nicest things about this extra good-tasting processed cheese is the convenience of the package. You can easily keep three or four varieties on hand all the time because these packages take up so little room in your refrigerator. So be sure to look for them tomorrow in your grocer's dairy case. Convenient, delicious craft Deluxe Slices. Well, it seems Leroy's million-dollar laundry has made a slight mistake. Plenty of shirts came into the laundry, but now there's a little problem of getting them back to the right people. In fact, it isn't a little problem at all. It's a mighty big one. The million-dollar laundry has had the shirts over a week now... And the president is in trouble. Well, I didn't mean to get them mixed up. I know you didn't mean to, but they are. You'll have to figure out some way to sort them out. How can I sort them out? Don't ask me. This is your laundry. It's your idea. But they all look alike. Yeah, I know. The white shirt looks like every other white shirt. And mine are in there, too. You better think of something, Leroy, and you better think fast. Aren't you going to help me, Unc? No, sir. It's your business, Leroy. You got yourself into this mess. Now get yourself out. I'm going for a walk. (laughs) (laughs) That boy has to learn to watch it. It's his own fault, not mine. What a mess. Poor little kid. He's scared. Well, he deserves to be scared. It'll do him good. Kind of a mean trick, though. Leaving him in trouble like that. Gildersleeve, don't be a heel. No, I'm not being a heel. Yes, you are. Well, maybe I am. Leroy? Yeah? You are now. Don't cry. We'll figure out something. You're going to help me? Sure. That's all part of being a good businessman, my boy. There's no problem that's too big to be solved. And we'll solve this one. Gee, thanks, Unc. You bet. We'll straighten this out in jig time. Tell him, Uncle Mort, it's probably for you. Yeah, I'll take it, Marjorie. Hello. Hello, Gildy. Is Leroy there? Leroy? (laughs) Certainly, Judge. Leroy, it's for you. Me? Hooker. I've been wondering about my shirts. You have? Yeah, what'd he say? He's wondering about his shirts. Hello? Hello? What'll I tell him, Unc? Well, tell him... Leroy, when are you going to get that pile of shirts off the back porch? Oh, brother. Hello? We can't move out there, Unky. Hello? What'll I tell him, Unc? How'd I ever get back into this? <laughs> Leroy, tell him he can have his shirts this afternoon. Hello, Judge? Yeah? Unc says you can have them this afternoon. What's he doing with him? <laughs> Wait a minute. He wants to know what you're doing with him. Yofer, give me that phone, Leroy. Judge? Yeah, man. Hang up, you old goat. What about my shirt? You'll have them this afternoon. You can eat them for dinner. Goodbye. Well, what are you going to do, Unky? Unk says he'll get the shirts back this afternoon. He'll get them back, won't you, Unk? Well, I had to tell the judge something. I don't know how we're ever going to sort out those darn shirts. Well, why don't you let the fellas come to the house and pick them out? They'll recognize them. Say, that's not a bad idea. We'll make a little party out of it. Serve punch and cookies? Sure. Every man picks out his own shirts. Why, George, I knew I'd find a way out of this thing. (laughs) Hello. Hello, Sleeve. This is Mayor Terwilliger. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. I bet I know what you're calling about. You do? 
You lost your shirt. Yeah. This is no joking matter, Gildersleeve. I've been wearing the same shirt for three days. You well, so have I. Keep your shirt on. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. What happened to my laundry? Well, a little mix-up, Mr. Mayor. The markings got lost. We're having a little get-together at my house this afternoon with refreshments. Come on over and pick out your shirt. What Gildersleeve? I... You did one of those things. It can happen in the best of laundries. Yet I'm taking charge, so don't you worry. Just come over this afternoon about 5 o'clock. All right, Gildersleeve. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. How are we doing, Unc? You're eight. I told you I'd get this thing straightened out. Gee, you're the smartest uncle in the world. You, well, it's all a matter of using your head, my boy. Yes, sir. Miss Gildersleeve, what about them shirts? You know, it's all settled, Bertie. We'll all pitch in and iron them up neatly. And then the fellows are coming over this afternoon to pick them out. Clever idea, don't you think? You mean they're going to come in and find their own shirt? Sure. You yeah, know, I'll pick out mine, too. Mine are in there, you know. We'll have a nice little party of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's so funny? This is liable to be some party. You know what's that? What happens when two men both decide on the same shirt? <laughs> oh, that couldn't happen, Bertie. It could Mr. Gillsleeve, have you ever been to a bargain sale? Well, it won't be like that, Bert. I can see them men tearing into them shirts. Mr. Gillsleeve, you're going to have a hassle. No, Bertie. Yes, sir. I can see them men pulling and yanking. You're going to have a hassle. You're all right, Bert. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know what you're going to have? Yes, Bert. That's right. You're going to have a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> You set them on the table there by the punch and quit eating them. I have the last of the shirts, Unky. Good. They spread them out there in the couch, my dear. The others are on the dining room table. Holy cow, I really took in the laundry. Yes, yes you did. Almost five o'clock, Miss Gilsey. Well, I'm all ready, Bertie. What are you doing? I'm taking the breakables out of the living room. If there's going to be a hassle in here, I'm going to save the good stuff. <laughs> well... Here they come, Unky. I'll open the door. I'll go to the door. It's my laundry. Hi, Leroy. Hello, Mr. Munson. Come on in. Good afternoon, Mr. Munson. Hi, Marge. Hi, Commissioner. Well, greetings, Floyd. You're the first one here. Yep, that's me. Come early and stay late. I figured I'd get here a little ahead of time, get the pick of the shirt. <laughs> well, take it easy, Floyd. Wait till the others get here. Oh, you got the best one spotted already, huh, Commissioner? Good afternoon, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Oh, hello, Mr. Peavy. Leroy. Well, Judge and Peavy, glad to see you. Glad to see you, Gilda. And I'm glad you see my shirt. <laughs> hello, Leroy. Hi, Judge. Peavy. Floyd. Hey, if the Chief was here, we could have a Jolly Boys meeting. Why, well, George, we could at that. Yeah, I'm certainly happy to see you fellas taking this thing in a friendly spirit. <laughs> well, you never can tell, Gilda. I might go out of here with better shirts than I had before. I didn't wear my glasses. <laughs> oh, no, Judge. Hey, we ought to draw straws to see who gets first crack at them. No, indeed. It's every man for himself. You, brother, maybe Bertie was right. Well, that looks like your man. Yeah, I'll let him in. Now I see who gets the best shirt. No. Well, Mr. Mayor, welcome. Thank you, Gildersleeve. Mayor Dewilliger? You know all the fellows. Yes, yes, howdy do, boys. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Well, here we all are. All shirt owners. <laughs> I'm in the same boat, you know. So, fellows, look them over and find your own. Sure, let's get started, huh? Now, 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 let's huh? not get excited. There's plenty of shirts for everybody. <laughs> I know we all trust each other. Why, of course we do. That looks like mine with a pearl button. Oh, this one's mine. Say, I found one. Oh, this is like a game. I spy, I found another shirt. <laughs> no, fellas, don't overdo this. Uh, uh, you got one there with your frayed collar? Here's another one. That's two I got. I got three. I found I another. Yes, <laughs> Look at them go. This is the best party we ever had. <laughs> Judge. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. 
Well, I sure took care of that situation. You sure did, Unc. Yeah, they all got their shirts back, and they had a fine time besides. Yeah, what a nice bunch of fellows. Yeah, keen guys. You see, Leroy, there was no squabbling. It all worked perfectly. Not a single shirt left. I noticed that, Anki. Uh, where are your shirts? Oh, they're right over there. Right. <laughs> My shirts. Oh, I forgot all about them. They're all gone. Oh, what a sneaky thing to do. <laughs> Leroy. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now you can please every member of your family with Kraft Deluxe Slices, because these slices of fine pasteurized processed cheese that Kraft wraps eight to the package come in five delicious varieties. There's wonderfully mellow Kraft American, Kraft American with pimentos added, nut sweet Kraft Swiss, Kraft Brick with that grand, rich taste, and sharp Old English brand. Get several half-pound packages so everyone can enjoy his favorite for quick snacks and sandwiches that are so easy to fix. Tomorrow, look for them in your grocer's dairy case, the five varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices of delicious processed cheese. Something for you, sir? Yes. You can give me four white shirts. They're size 16, 36. There you are. Shall I wrap them? No, I just put them in a bag. Yes, sir. That'll be seven eighty-five with the tax. Hello, Gilder. Well, hello, Judge. Oh, what do you have in the bag? I just came from the bakery. It's full of dried bread for my pigeons. <laughs> I'll set it here on the counter. Nice party yesterday, Gilder. Yeah, nice. Ate all my cookies, drank all my punch. Somebody ran off with all my shirts. Probably you, Judge. Well, I'll take my bag and be on my way. Goodbye. Goodbye. And I'll take my shirts. Shirts. Doof. Judge. Judge, you got the wrong bag. Dry bread. Oh, keep it. Gilder Steve, today you're the pigeon. Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Stanley Farrar, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. to taste something good? Well, next time you make a cold meat sandwich, don't forget to add a little Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Get both kinds. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft Prepared Mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the raw deal. Here comes that madman Groucho Marx on...